Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service, our praise in the parking lot. A special greeting and welcome to all who are visiting us, especially those visiting us for the first time today. I think we've got uh, a young university student. Is it McKenna? McKenna, welcome. It's good to have you with us this morning. This morning, brothers and sisters, God reminds us how precious is a confession. Uh, not a confession uh, repenting of something, but rather a confession of faith. When we're able to say and stand and state what it is we believe. Jesus says this morning to Peter, upon your confession, I will build my church. And on this rock, it will be built and not even the gates of Hades will prevail against it. It's our confession of faith. And so we call ourselves a confessional Lutheran church because what matters most is not what we do, but what we confess because our confession is what we do. And so this morning, the theme is keep the home fires burning. The devil, the world, and the flesh, they're going to attack the perimeters of our faith, our confession. And so it is the mission of the church to have a pure confession. Would the congregation please join with me this morning as together we make the sign of the cross and make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the very body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Together we continue with the introit for the day. From Psalm 138, I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom to know is everlasting life, Grant us to know your Son, Jesus, to be the way, the truth, and the life. 
that we may boldly confess him to be the Christ and steadfastly walk in the way that leads to life eternal. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first reading from Isaiah chapter 51, beginning with verse 1. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you, seek, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Our second lesson this morning from Romans chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. We rise. Oh. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for, the, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of the Lord. We too join Peter and all of the apostles and all of the saints in confessing our common faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And I invite the children for a special message this morning. Uh, good morning, boys and girls, wherever you are. Can I hear you? Because I can't see you. Very nice. Good to see. Good to hear and see you this morning. Good morning, Ashley. Oh, what time of the year is it? Do you getting ready to go back to school? You, Ashley's way, saying no, no, she's saying. She's not getting ready. Well, maybe mom and dad are getting ready to go back to school. I know my kids are getting ready for school. And you know, I brought my filing cabinet along. This is pastor's back to school. Uh, uh, I don't know what I want to call this. My war chest, my resource box. But I've got my tools, everything I need in here. On the, on the top. I've got a little compartment with all. I've got my red. I don't know if you can see. I also have some post-its here. I've got clips, highlighters inside. I've got my files. I even have my handy dandy notepad to take notes. And guess who my teachers are? It's all of you guys. You're, and I'm taking notes from everybody. Do you know what, boys and girls? In our story this morning, our Bible story, Jesus took the disciples back to school. Jesus asked a couple of questions. When I was a kid, I think I remember, especially in second grade, when the teacher, Mrs. Jones, would ask a question and the kids would raise their hand in the air, I would raise my hand too because everyone else was raising their hands and I figured I'd have something good to say by the time she called on me. I didn't all the times I would squint my eye and then I would look straight up at the ceiling and Mrs. Jones would say, Marty, the answer is not on the ceiling. But Jesus asked the disciples this morning, he asked a question. He said, who do the people say that I am? And the disciples said, well, some say that you're Elijah. Others say you're Jeremiah. Some say you're John the Baptist. And then Jesus called on the disciples. He says, but what do you guys say? Who do you say that I am? And I don't even think Peter raised his hand. Peter just simply said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He gave that answer. And that was the correct answer. And Jesus said, isn't it wonderful when your teacher says, you've got it. You got the right answer. Jesus said, Peter, you got it. And he said, Peter, on, on this rock, not Peter himself, the man, but on his confession he said, I'm going to build my church. And on that confession that I am the son of the living God, not even the gates of Hades, the devil, the world of the flesh will destroy it. Thanks be to God this morning that he gives us the answers. Because Jesus said, Peter, you didn't get that from flesh or blood. You didn't get that from your mom or dad. You got that from God. He sent the Holy Spirit and he's in you and he gave you that answer. Oh, if the Holy Spirit would only give me answers like that to all the questions in life, right? But he does, he does give us the answer to the most important question in life. Who is Jesus? Can you say with pastor, the son of the living God? I think I heard you say it. Let us pray together. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for being my teacher and for sending the Holy Spirit to give me 
the most important answer about who you are. You are the son of the living God. Amen. Thanks for coming forward this morning. We continue with our sermon. our Father, our Lord, and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the ancient world, fires were vitally important. People used fire for heating, for cooking, for light. They didn't have electric switches or lighters. So homekeepers would keep the home fires burning for as long as they could. In the morning, they would stoke those coals from the night before keeping those coals burning and lit all day long. And then in the evening, they would cover those coals up to slow down the burning so they would make it all the way through the night. When a member of the household came home late, they hoped that they would find the home fires burning. They hoped that they could see from a distance the light to light their path. And maybe if they were lucky, they could heat something up over the fire to eat before they go to bed at night. In the same way, Jesus asks us to keep the home fires burning in our hearts, in our homes, and in our church through the words of his testimony. Jesus asks the disciples, he asks us today, who do you say that I am? This is probably the most important question in all of life. Who is Jesus? Church is built on the rock of that testimony. Jesus is looking to stoke the coals of our faith this morning. A person's judgment concerning Jesus is their testimony. Jesus asks his disciples this very direct question about the disciples' testimony. What do they believe about who he is and what he says? kind of reminds us of our recent congregational survey. Jesus wanted to know about his disciples. He was surveying what it is they believed about him and his word. What were their convictions? Bottom line, what is their confession, their testimony? The disciples didn't hide behind popular opinions of others. What the world says and said, Jesus asks them, he begins by asking them, however, what 
What do people say about who I am? And the disciples gave the variety of answers. Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Elijah. And then he says, well, who do you say that I am? And we take two, two points here. First, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, who really cares, right, what the world says? It doesn't matter what other people think because God asks you, what do you think? What do I think? And someday, I'm not going to be standing of popular opinion. I am going to be standing before my Heavenly Father at the throne. And it's just between me and the Lord. And so Jesus says, secondly, the point in the takeaway is, listen, what matters is what you believe. And is your testimony fire? Is it warm and hot? It, can it light the way so that others can see the living Lord, the Son of God, Jesus Christ? That's what matters this morning. Jesus wanted to make sure the fire of faith was burning in the disciples' heart and that others could catch on fire as a result of it. So when you wonder, sometimes you hear people say, our church is on fire. What, what does that mean? What it really should mean is that other people are catching our testimony, our confession of faith, that others are being lit. That is their, the little mustard seed in their heart is catching root, taking root and catching on fire and faith is being lit up and ignited in our communities. That's, that's how we know that God is alive and well. When others too are making that same confession that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God. That is the best report card that a church could ever get. That people said, you know what? Because of your church, I learned who Jesus Christ is. I learned that he is the son of God. That he is my savior. There are all sorts of ideas out there about Jesus. Who he is, what he did, the mission of the church. But when he turns to us and he asks, but what about you? Who do you say that I am? We answer simply with Peter. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus, he says to you and to me this morning, as he said to the disciples then, blessed are you. Blessed are you, Emmanuel. Blessed are you. For this was not revealed to you by men, but by my father in heaven. Thanks be to God that we've got that confession this morning. Jesus goes on to say, and on this confession, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Do you remember when the disciples said, Lord, this is beautiful because this is kind of what the scene looked like for the disciples and Jesus sitting on the Mount of Olives. The disciples surrounded Jesus on the Mount of Olives and right over there was the synagogue, this beautiful temple. And the disciples said, Lord, look how beautiful the temple is. And Jesus said, hey, guys, that temple one day, not one brick will stand on the next. And it was about 70, within 70 years that Rome completely wiped out that temple. But Jesus said and said, you are the temple of God. Your confession, you are the rock. You are the life of the church. Jesus goes on to say, on this rock, I will build my church. And not even the gates of Hades will overcome it. And there will be attacks. Satan is fierce like a roaring lion attacking on all sides, trying to rip down the fortifications of our faith. And the promise to Peter and the promise to Emmanuel Lutheran Church, to you, to me, to all of you moms and dads and you loved ones who are concerned about loved ones, is that God will build his church on the hot coals of this confession and that Christ is the son of the living God and that nothing will overcome it. So you just simply entrust your loved ones into the hands of God. Nothing will overcome it. We learn a beautiful story, much to be learned from the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire was immensely successful in establishing an empire that lasted for a long, long time because they were very good at organizing themselves. Not just the administration of the empire, but they could organize their army. 
Now there were the Marines in the Roman army. Everybody loves the Marines because they go out and they conquer. They grab territory from the enemy. Of the Roman legions, there were only a small number of those armies, however, that were aggressive troops. Most of the Roman army was not aggressive at all. Most were not involved in that type of warfare. They were involved in what is called garrison duty, which means they would protect the ground that has been conquered to make sure that the enemy didn't take it back. That is really what God is asking of us this morning. That is what he's asking of the church. Protect holy ground. It is enough to stand in faith upon the word of God. It's not easy. We can see that. The word of God is being ripped out from underneath our feet day after day after day. Satan wants us to get no traction. No solid foundation. He attacks our faith by attacking the reliability of the Word of God. It reminds me of Jurassic Park. You saw that movie? I enjoyed it. I'm kind of a kid at heart when it comes to movies. However, some movies get me on the edge of my seat. And these little dinosaurs called raptors, I don't know if you, you the, the dinosaur man has got his thumb out the window. I don't know if you've heard about raptors, but these little guys are very intelligent and they could, they work together. And, and, and in the movie, they depicted the raptors trying to penetrate and get at the people who were safely protected by this big electric fence. But the raptors were testing the fence to find a weakness in the perimeter so that they could break through. And we know that's exactly what the evil one does with our faith. And he... He has that confession of faith for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It began with Adam and Eve in the garden. Did God really say that? Can you trust the word of God? And he has not stopped. He is relentless. He has discovered how he can penetrate the fortifications of our faith. And so Jesus is asking us this morning, just stand in my word. Stand in that confession. It, speaking of the Roman Empire, now doing guard duty or sentry duty, it was quite boring, quite frankly. Soldiers who were involved in garrison duty spent most of their lives doing the ordinary everyday things like keeping the fires going, cooking food, and so on. But once a day or so, they were called to guard duty. They were usually placed on the frontier, and they usually had four watches in their guard duty. These were day watchers and night watchers. People who did guard duty didn't do much fighting. The only time you did any fighting is if the enemy attacked your post or the perimeters. But there were two things that were so important that if you neglected them, you were put to death. Number one, under no circumstances, at the cost of your life, you were not to abandon your post. So your duty as a sentry is to stand where you are placed, to stand on guard. Secondly, the danger was that at nighttime, especially in the second watch of the night, midnight to dawn, the danger was that you would fall asleep. And sentry, any sentry who was found asleep would immediately be executed in spiritual warfare we're called to sentry duty to keep the home fires burning we are called to protect holy ground to protect that word of God that has taken root in our hearts and in the hearts of others that confession of faith very few of us are called to be Marines and go into direct battle against Satan. Instead, the majority of us are called to do something far more modest. We are called to stand guard, to watch over that trust, that deposit that was placed into our hearts through baptism, through the hearing and receiving of the beautiful word of God into our hearts. 
Paul says, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. He says, guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Cover the coals and keep that faith in God's word burning. The devil, the world, and the flesh will test the perimeters of our faith to see if we have abandoned our post, to see if we have fallen asleep. Paul describes spiritual warfare. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13, he says, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, and it will come, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything, stand. We don't need to seek the enemy. Paul reminds us that the enemy will come to us. And so he says, stand. We are not spiritual crusaders. We are called to guard duty or sentry duty. We are called to protect holy ground. To make our stand with Peter, the apostles, and all of the saints down through the ages. To stand on that one confession of faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. The victory has already been won. God won when he defeated sin, death, and the devil. Jesus said, it is finished. The battle's already been won. Jesus is victorious. And he says that, and on this confession, Jesus says something interesting. He says, I will build the church. He never says, you guys build the church. Pastor Lee, you're not going to build this church. He kind of says, Pastor Lee, you get out of the way. If anything, you, you, you get in the way. He says, I'm going to build the church. And so all I need to do is echo the word of God faithfully. To hold fast to the word of God and the promises found therein. And to protect it and to guard it. And any, any attack or assault on the word of God, we must defend it. And say, no, no, God said something different, devil. God didn't say that. God said this. How dare you try to, to put a spin on the word of God? Jesus will build his church on this confession. He is the Christ. He is the mighty arm of God. He will protect his word and his faith that he has planted in us. Revelations chapter 12 verse 11 says that those who conquer do so by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so as to shy away from death. John, who wrote Revelations, reminds us that as we protect the confession of faith, we're going to be assaulted. We may even lose our lives. And many of the saints down through the ages did. We will experience great assaults by the world, the devil, and the, even our own flesh because the Word of God makes no sense to us, but we receive it by faith. And Jesus says that that testimony, through it, your life will actually be saved by the blood of the Lamb. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us join with Peter and confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And when Jesus Christ comes then on the last day, well into the late hours, those wee hours of the night, may he find the home fires burning in your heart. May he find the home fires burning in your neighbor's hearts. And may he find the home fires burning here at Emmanuel. Amen? Amen. And now may the peace of God, which truly does transcend all human understanding, guard and protect our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ. Amen. Boy, after hearing all of those honks after the sermon, I was thinking, well, if anyone fell asleep during that sermon, they were just awoken. Let us continue, brothers and sisters, with our congregational prayers. Service of the sacraments. We'll follow that. Having heard the word proclaimed, let us pray for ourselves and for all the faithful and for all who confess that Jesus is the Christ, the living Son of the living God. For all people, that they may have faith in Christ and heed the voice of God calling by his word 
for the church that the people of God may pursue righteousness with peace and joy in their hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, Congress, governor, and all civic leaders in their pursuit of peace and unity, for all judges and magistrates in their pursuit of justice with mercy, and for those who protect us from violence and preserve order here and everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. For all noble professions and for the flourishing of the arts and music, for favorable weather and the fruits of the earth, and for those unemployed, the poor, the homeless, the hungry, and all people in need, let us pray to the Lord. For all families and children, single adults and youth, for those who teach and those who learn, those that go back to school, that they may advance in wisdom and grace, and for the catechumens, our new confirmation students, and those who teach the faith to them, let us pray to the Lord. For victims of disaster and for those stricken by illness or infirmity, for those displaced by the fires in California, for the aged and infirm, as well as those in nursing homes and assisted living facilities, for those who grieve the loss of those whom they love, for those who meet with sudden death, let us pray to the Lord. For the work of God's kingdom in this place, for our faithful support of the church and the renewal of our parish life through the means of grace, for the TTF activities in our congregation, for our communion this day upon the life-giving body and blood of Christ, and for our growth in grace that we may attain to the full stature of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Be merciful to us, O Lord, and hear our prayers. Grant to us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be led into all truth and be steadfast in the confession of Christ through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life therefore with angels and archangels and with all of the company of heaven we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and made His cry cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in Him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through G Jesus Christ. 
grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as, he, as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
communion, Ral, to receive a blessing. So this morning, I want to give a blessing to all of the children. Dear children, may the Lord Jesus bless you and keep you in your baptismal waters to life everlasting, knowing that that precious mustard seed planted in you is your confession. Go in his peace. Amen. The night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples. And he said to them, to you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Take and eat the very body of Christ given for you. Up. And when he had given thanks and when he had supped, he said unto his disciples, Drink, surely this is the New Testament of my blood poured out for you for the remission of all of your sins, drink ye all of it, and do this often in remembrance of me. Take and drink the very blood of the Lamb poured out for you. And now may this Holy Supper strengthen you and preserve you and keep you each steadfast in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go with peace and joy in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. And now receive a blessing from our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. Uh, I thought I would give you a uh, weekly update about the uh, Transition Task Force. And I am pleased to report that uh, 70 of you have filled out surveys uh, already. So we are very thankful for the information and data that you've provided. And I would like to encourage those who have not filled out a survey yet, let's see if we can reach 100. That would be a big uh, proportion of the church and would make us really feel like uh, everybody's voice is being represented. So if you can go online, uh, possibly by the end of today, uh, we will be able to use that data shortly. Uh, those of you that do not have internet access, um, you could certainly uh, email Leslie in the church office. Uh, she'd be happy to mail that survey to you, and then we can use that data uh, as we are doing our final deliberations uh, for the report that we're going to present. Uh, so all of this data is going to be used then for the next uh, cottage meeting. Uh, so I encourage uh, folks to uh, sign up for that. Uh, we'll be uh, looking at that data about um, the role of women in church. We'll be discussing uh, church and state. And finally, uh, God's word and looking at the sixth commandment. Uh, so those uh, will be coming up very shortly, uh, next Saturday at uh, 10 a.m., uh, next Sunday at 4.30, and then that following Wednesday, September 2nd at uh, 6.30, I believe. Uh, so we look forward to uh, seeing you all there, uh, talking about uh, what God's word says, what the LCMS positions are, and how that compares with the feelings of Emmanuel and starting to uh, figure out uh, what that all means. So um, have a wonderful Sunday, and uh, we hope to see you over the next week and a half. Good morning. Uh, just a little update on the uh, gift certificate for our um, law enforcement officers. Um, next Sunday, we're going to start taking uh, donations towards that. And so um, Marvin has everything plugged in with the uh, checking account. And so if you want to make a donation, this is not a requirement, but it's something you, if you want to just donate at any sum, that'd be really good. So thank you for being here today. We uh, topped the record here at 56 cars today. So uh, um, gather up more for later, and thank you for our, our student to come over and gain, uh, gather with us also and, and bring more along the way, okay? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, McKenna, for being here this morning. You probably didn't think you'd get all this attention having to sit out in front of the whole congregation. That's like the teacher calling you up to sit in a special chair next to the teacher. So, uh, but she's not alone. She's in good company up here. Um, so a couple of quick announcements this morning. The first is in your bulletin, you'll notice um, there's an invitation to every member of the congregation to feel free to schedule a, a phone conversation with me, a meeting in the church office. Uh, each day for two hours, we've blocked out time, Leslie and I. You can just call the church office and schedule an appointment with the pastor. So there should be no chance, I hope, I pray, that um, anyone who needs a visit or needs a, a just a good chat or a word of encouragement or a prayer, uh, I'm here. That's what, that's what I'm here for. So we don't get to see each other as much under normal circumstances circumstances, but we can talk on the phone, and I, I would love to pray with you. I told somebody this past week, I have the gift of gab, so I, I don't mind at all. I, I really enjoy getting to know everyone. The second announcement this morning is our Bible study this morning. I actually uh, have uh, written the Bible study. Uh, your congregation has been a tremendous blessing to me and my growth and my learning. So I wrote the Bible study for this morning. It's titled, Relating Marriage in the Family to the Pastoral Office. I, I am excited to talk to you about this Bible study, but I know that many cannot show up on the uh, digital link, the, the Zoom meeting this morning, but I've got handouts. So on your way out of the church, if you'd like to get a handout, I printed 50 this morning. Please feel free to take one, and I hope each car can get at least one of these handouts. And finally, everybody, it is back to school time. So if you get called on to answer the question, who do you say that I am, just relax. 
God the Holy Spirit, the Heavenly Father, He'll give you the right words to say. Amen? Amen. When in doubt, wink and look up to the ceiling. Up to heaven, I should say. Oh, one more announcement. Ah, Mark is signaling fruit and vegetable stand. Help yourself to anything and everything. God's peace. Have a blessed week. Thank you.